welcome back. I'm Ted Rudin. and today, thanks to Acton Auto Boutique in Acton, Massachusetts, we're driving this very bright yellow Porsche 718 Spider. And it's a four liter naturally aspirated flat six making 414 horsepower. And when the Spider and GT4 first came out and they told us we were getting a NA four liter, we thought, oh my goodness, it's finally happening. They're putting the GT3 engine in the Cayman and Boxster. Well, they didn't quite do that. This is still a phenomenal engine, but it must be noted that this is essentially a three liter tur twin turbo that has been stripped of its turbos and punched out from three liters to four liters. So it's a pretty unique little engine. And not very long after this and the GT4 came out, they started making the GTS four liter. But Here's the thing about the Spider. The Spider is especially special because it shares pretty much every component with the GT4. Back in the early days, let's say the 987 Spider when you had a Cayman R or a 981 Spider, they did not fully share the GT suspension. But now for the 982, I know guys, I'm sorry to disappoint, this is not actually called a 718 with its chassis. It's a 982. 78 is just the name of it. It's a 718 Spider in commemoration of the old school 718 Porsche. But anyway, for 982, this is a GT4 with no roof. And because it's a Spider and not just simply a Boxster, you get this beautiful double bubble rear deck lid and a really cool manual roof. And I'll put some video in of lowering it because it is a bit of a pain, but it's not so cumbersome that you wouldn't want to do it. You can do it. It's not awful. It's just that if you're the type of person who wants to use that roof down on slow roads right up until the red light where the rain starts falling yeah it's not a one button thing you do have to get out of the car and uh, put it up from the rear I think this car just looks incredible because like I said you've got that double bubble rear deck and it's so long I mean look at the real estate from here to here that's pretty wild and then you have this spoiler which does raise and lower at speed or at will on a button you've got a valved exhaust with two tips coming out the rear with probably the most clever little diffuser all plastic so not too much to worry about in the way of oh no we bottomed it out although there is ground clearance but what I like about these cars is that the front and rear splitter and diffusers are plastic so you don't have that panic moment if you do touch something going in and out of a driveway oh no we didn't just do twelve thousand dollars worth of damage to carbon fiber I think the 718 Spider just looks fantastic. It's the perfect size. This is the right size for a car, for a Porsche. 911s are too big, in my opinion. And right now, they've just announced the Spider RS, where you will be able to get the GT3 9000 RPM engine, some crazy scoops for intake right next to your face. But alas, that will be hard to find, hard to get an allocation for, and quite a bit more expensive. So I suppose we could just go enjoy this today. But first, let me just show you around. There is reasonable storage. In fact, phenomenal storage in this car, despite being a two-seater with no luggage space behind those front seats. You've got a nice cavernous frunk. We've got our car cover up here, but this is fantastic. You can really fit some serious luggage in here. And if you needed more space, you do have a actual trunk. And back here, of course, that's where that roof is stored over here. So this is such a crazy architecture of supports to get this thing up and out. This is, if you're like a technical nerd and you want to look at hinges, this is actually pretty wild. And it's got hood struts, so it does stay up and raise on its own. But back here, I've got some of my stuff. I've got some sunscreen, very important when you're driving these cars. I must say, a lot of people forget sunscreen when they're driving convertibles. It gets so brutal and you look like a lobster when you get to your destination and now you're not having a good time. So always keep some sunscreen in your convertibles. All right, so let's jump in and take this mid-engine rocket for a drive. And you know, it's just funny because there's really no way to see the engine. So normally I would show you the two little electric fans on like a 911, but in this thing, you got nothing. 
Inside, this one has a pretty clever spec. We do have the comfy seats, which I'm excited about today because the carbon buckets look fantastic, but sometimes they're just overkill for like normal driving. This one has carbon fiber accents, yellow deviated stitching on the dashboard leather. And I think the leather package with this dashboard is a must because when this is plastic, when it's just that cheesy plastic, it looks like a Toyota. No offense, Toyota, but it's a Porsche, guys. You gotta have the leather. And I know it takes a little extra upkeep because you need to keep it moisturized so it doesn't wither and contract in the sun but i assure you it is worth it alcantara steering wheel and you know with less than 5,000 miles on the clock yeah these things get pretty worn in and that's just the way it is so if you choose for the alcantara um good for you the deviated stitching inside but it's gonna look old quick so you can always there's people who can restore them and make them look good i would do that every season if i were you um or you just get the leather. Either way, good to go. And because it's a spider, you get these little door straps instead of the handles. Over here, beyond that carbon fiber, are your cup holders. Some absolutely hate these cup holders. I actually don't mind them. The only problem is that this one kind of sits right over your buttons and uh, shifter. So it's easy to knock into a, a poorly covered drink and potentially send some liquid into places you do not want it. So let's get it started. We've got our key over here, not paint match. That's nice. That tells me that they were frugal. They put the money where it needed to go and not into like the ridiculously expensive paint match key. Jumps right to life. I love the gauge cluster in this car. Analog on the left, middle, and then you've got your little toggle thing in the center to tell you all that information, fuel, blah, blah, blah. Fantastic. And Apple CarPlay, always helpful. Down here, auto blip, your suspension, soft or firm. You've got a valved exhaust. Here it's off. We can give it a little rev. Turn it on. A little bit louder. And then you've got your spoiler and an auto off. Now this auto uh, uh, start stop when you come to a stop isn't simply to turn the engine on and off when you come to a stop. It also has cylinder deactivation. So this six cylinder will run on three cylinders in certain steady state driving to save fuel. So if you do not want it to be toggling between six and three cylinders, making weird noises, we'll exemplify it later. You can just hit that. It'll turn the auto start start off and it will stop doing cylinder deactivation. Now it's nice to revisit the stock transmission because the Maritime Blue Spider that you see me driving around in once in a while has the demand re-gear. So second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth are all different. Second through fifth are shorter. Sixth gear is longer. Nice and slow through here. Luckily we've got reasonable ground clearance despite not having a nose lift. because you've got such long gearing, especially for second and third, you know, you can really run out second for quite a while, which honestly isn't bad because this four liter has got enough poke and enough torque down low to kind of pull you out in that low to mid range. The only problem is that with the tall gearing, you don't get that hard, like intense thrust into the back of your seat. The beauty of the Spider, though, 
is that it's just an all around lovely thing to operate. It feels good to be in, it's easy to drive, it doesn't beat you up unless you're just in the desert and getting hit by the sun, in which case you can always throw that roof back on. But I've got the AC coming at me right now. So even when it gets a little chilly or too hot, I just use the HVAC system to uh, kind of compensate and keep my skin cool or warm. The other thing about the spider is that everybody seems to love them. They don't have that sort of like cynical rich dude Porsche vibe about them where people are like, oh, what a jerk, this guy and his 911 or whatever, which I think does happen, you know? This car though, everybody loves it. It's a happy car. I think some people don't really notice how much it costs because, you know, they start at just about a hundred grand, but you can option them out anywhere between like 110 to 150 and above if you really go nuts with CXX options. But they seem sort of approachable financially. And I know that's crazy, but they hold their value. So if you were to spend, you know, 120, $130,000 on one of these, whether it's new or used, you're probably in good shape because Right now, this is what everybody is trying to scoop up. And it's not just because, you know, they look good or whatever. I think, I think a lot of influencers have shown that these are fantastic. I mean, you see Matt Farah out there in his pink car, the Frozenberry car. He's done a demand engine. I mean, he's put a lot of money into that car. So his is like a different animal. But it's shown that this is not just, uh, for lack of a better term, which I hate this, but a hairdresser's car. It is not, it is not. It is not a girly car. And I also resent when people say, oh, it's a girly car. I'm like, dude, it's a car. <laughs> there are no girly cars, only wimpy drivers who are too ashamed to be seen in something because they aren't strong enough to drive it. Even in stiff mode, the suspension isn't that brutal. You can hit some bumps, and that's what I mean when I say it's a livable car. You could take this on a trip. You can put people in this who aren't like hardcore car people because hardcore car people will forgive just about anything for the experience. They'll deal with no AC. They'll deal with miserable sounds. They'll deal with no catalytic converter, smelly exhaust. They'll deal with brutally stiff suspensions. But your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your non-car friends, may not be so forgiving. And they're like, man, it looks good, but what a piece of junk. My teeth are rattling. And this doesn't do that. This is a car that you could actually use without ruining the day of your non-enthusiast passenger. The clutch is light, but tactile. I do know where it's catching. It's not just this fuzzy amorphous thing that you hope to understand. You can feel it, but it's also not gonna beat you up in traffic. You can absolutely daily drive this clutch. I like a bright color in these cars because it's always nice to have something that's visible, something that people can see that you're not so concerned about like, hey, I'm little, I'm down here. No, bright is good, bright is safe. Out here on the highway, cruising speed, 75 miles an hour, hanging on to about 3000 RPM, just a touch under, not bad. It gets reasonable fuel economy and it's really composed and happy out here. Now this one has the steel brakes, not carbon ceramics. That's okay. You don't need the PCCBs. The PCCBs are a lot grabbier. They're a lot more responsive on the foot, but these are still incredibly intuitive. And I actually really like the steel Porsche brakes. It's not necessary to spend all that money on that, uh, on that brake setup. If you need to do it, do it. But you know, for most people, 
most people, even if you're going to the track, the steels will do you just fine. Obviously, you'll be replacing those rotors more frequently than the ceramic rotors, but these are good. These are good. Don't make no mistake that getting the lesser brake is not like a huge concession. I think the one complaint I have about these cars is they're just like too composed. You know, they're really flat in the way they handle. They 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 have less power than the chassis can handle, which means you could you could juice this up an extra 100 horsepower and be just fine. You wouldn't think twice about it. And this differential is just delicious. As a mid-engine car, obviously it's balanced. Weight distribution is phenomenal. Polar moment of inertia is like right behind you, right next to you, really. And then these brakes, right to these brakes, no problems. I love them. The comfy seats, which some people call couches, are genuinely good. I, 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 do not knock these seats. They may not look as extreme as the carbon buckets, but I think they suit the car really well. They feel really supportive. I'm a skinny dude, but you know, there's definitely more room for somebody with a larger frame than I in these than the carbon buckets. And man, th these are just fantastic. I would have no qualms taking this out to a racetrack. Um, the car has so much grip. It's insane how out of the box on just like a PS4S, this can do what it can do. It is unbelievably capable. And the beauty of this is you get your small topless sports car and it's kind of safe. I mean, a lot of times you think like, ooh, I want like an MG or a TR6 or a Lotus or, you know, any of these little cars come with real risk. If you get hit in a Lotus, like a Super 7 or an Elise or an Evora, like, I mean, the Evora is probably a lot better, but still, I would not want to get hit in an, Evo in an Elise. I would not want to get hit in the Porsche 356 Speedster. Um, I know I'm all over the map with price ranges here, but just for the sake of argument, you can have for like, you know, under 150 grand, a really safe, fun, practical, probably very reliable car that requires just oil changes. So. I just, I just think this car ticks so many boxes. It's phenomenal to drive. And if you have thought about one and wonder like, is it right? Yeah, yes. It just, it's straight up, it's the right car. Everything about this is amazing. It's just modern enough, but it's just tactile enough. And it comes with a six speed manual. What more do you want? So huge thank you to Acton Auto Boutique for setting me up in a Boxster Spider. I shouldn't say that, it's a 718 Spider. Doesn't say Boxster Spider, it says 718 Spider. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'm hoping, let that go by. I'm hoping that you guys are able to have a fun car filled summer with safe drives, enjoyable top down vibes, all the things. And I hope your cars are running. I hope the project that you're working on in the winter is moving. Or maybe you're on Bring a Trailer looking for this. Go buy it, go bid, go do the thing. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one.